Hi, my name's Keith Cooper, Northlet Images, and in this video I'm going to have a look at a camera I've been testing. Now, I quite often test cameras, usually fairly new stuff. This is slightly unusual in that it's the Hasselblad X1D Mark II. So it's a couple of years old. How come I'm testing this now? Well, I'm having a look at buying used equipment um, sometimes. Um, used equipment is just as good as new um, so I thought I'd have a look at this and was able to borrow it and um, it's a 50 megapixel medium format it's very similar to the X1D 50C that I reviewed not long after it came out four or five years ago this was the second version of it and now there's an X2D 100 with a 100 megapixel sensor in it so you know you might think, well, why bother looking at an old camera? As I said, mainly because it's quite a bit cheaper. Um, if you want to get yourself a Hasselblad, um, it's a good way into it. But I'll come back to why you might actually want a camera a bit more like this. But this is to, to talk about the actual camera itself. Now, I've got a written review that's got lots more sample images at higher resolution. I'll pop a few on the screen here, but they're never particularly good looking at stuff on YouTube. So have a look at the written article, the actual written review, and that's got lots more details in it. Now I'm testing the camera and that's it. Uh, it's a solid piece of work. It's, it, you, you feel that this is you know, it's been sort of cut out of a block of metal and um, the camera bits fitted inside it. It's, um, I liked it when I looked at the first version of it. The, this version is slightly darker on top. Uh, the controls are the same. There are a few other functions been changed and added, but not necessarily that much. Now, that was a complaint from some people when they looked at when it first came out. But I'm testing this with an XCD 30mm lens, 30 um, f3.5. Uh, basic prime lens. This has a leaf shutter in it. All the lenses for this have leaf shutters. Uh, that is not much use for the kind of work I use, uh, I tend to do. I'm an architectural industrial photographer. Uh, but if you want to use flash in daylight, having a leaf shutter, the sync speed on this, you can use flash at almost any shutter speed. I believe you can use it through the full range of shutter speeds. So if you want a very short shutter speed, if you want to use flash in daylight to fill things in, or just you know, as your main source of illumination, and to have a small app, a wide open aperture as well for soft focus or something like that, then it's great. 24 mil f3.5 is not what you're going to necessarily pick for out, you know, for uh, smooth out of focus background shots. Um, there are longer lenses, obviously, for this. So if you're into sort of portrait stuff, maybe you want to look at it. But this does not have face detect and the focus, the AF on it is contrast based. So it's a little slow. And certainly if you're used to using a modern mirrorless camera, high megapixel full frame camera there, uh, you're not necessarily going to get this. It's not an action camera, but what it does do is give you very good pictures because of the sensor that's in it. It's 50 megapixel. It's medium format. It's the smaller version of medium format. Uh, so it's distinctly larger than a 35 millimeter sensor. So you get more light into the sensor. 50 megapixels over a large sensor are gives you a better image than 50 megapixels on a smaller sensor. I use still a Canon 5DS, which is 50 megapixels. And um, I did a brief comparison of that. I'll put a link as well to the earlier X1D, the Mark I review as well, because that's got more technical details. Um, I was looking at that with a different lens as well. But really, I'm just thinking, what would I use this for? Well, it turns out um, it's rather nice for landscape, architecture, although not with tilt shift. If you want tilt shift on a Hasselblad, you need to use something like the HTS adapter or, or a specialized tilt shift lens, which Hasselblad don't do. The HTS adapter, I've got tests of that. So I'll put a link to that in as well. So if you want more or any of this stuff, have a look at the written articles. And I've got some videos as well, linked to them as well, if you, if you prefer that. But anyway, I'm testing this. It's 24 mil 
uh, equivalent rough 23-24 millimeter on 35 mm. So it's a widish angle lens. It's not ultra wide. Um, I did test the X original X1D with a 21 millimeter lens, and that was broadly equivalent to 16-17 millimeter on 35 mm. So that's very wide. This is just a nice, what I regard as a nice general purpose wide angle lens. I'm happy to use as a sort of walking round type lens. Um, so I mentioned this is this is second hand. Came from come from Park Cameras in the UK, a company I've dealt with for at least twenty odd years. Uh, they do quite a range of used stuff as well. Uh, this particular one was actually um, I've got the boxes and things here. In fact, the hardest bit of work when this goes back is putting it back in all the boxes because all the original packaging was there. And there's the thing: if you want to get a camera um, and you're worried about buying second hand, um, I wouldn't have a problem with it. Um, I was doing some work with a client the other day, um, some training work. They wanted a camera. They got themselves a Canon. 90D. They got a used one. Um, it was, I couldn't tell the difference between that and the brand new. So it's worth it saving yourself a few bob, um, you know, in the costs for it. But I'm just using that. What's different about this? Anything significantly different about it? Well, it's still the same 50mm sensor. It's obviously a lot cheaper. Um, key difference I noticed immediately, it's snappier. Um, it I don't necessarily know if Hasselblad like snappy applying to one of their cameras. But anyway, um, it turns on much faster. It's less sluggish. It's got a better screen on the back. It's got a better viewfinder. It's just generally been tweaked. Now, quite a few people were not happy about the specs of this and have said in quite a few reviews I've seen that, you know, that it's a bit disappointing. Depends what you want. Um, would you buy a an old two-seat sports car if you require a car to take the kids to school and to go on the weekly shop? Probably not. Uh, this is not a casual camera, uh, not at this cost. Um, still costs several thousand quid. So yeah, it's going to be something that you want. Why would you use it? Well, so image quality would be the key thing for me. Um, it's got GPS in it now as well. Um, I didn't test it out because I didn't go anywhere where I didn't know where I was from looking at the pictures afterwards. Um, it's all built in stuff. It's nice. So the battery, I should mention that it now charges by USB. So this is a USB charger lead type C connector into this. It charge the battery in the camera. With the old one, you had to take the camera, take take the battery out and use a, a, a charger to plug into the battery to charge it up. This one, I was not worried about the battery going flat. I was able to use an external power bank, keep that in my camera bag. So when I'm not using the camera, I just pop the USB into it and it's recharging it whilst I'm sort of out and about. Um, useful thing, uh, definite use for USB charging is it saves you having to worry quite so much about batteries. I would prefer a second battery with any camera, but then that's because yeah, I do this for a job. So I don't, last thing I want is happening when I'm on a job is for, um, batteries to run flat and things like that. But anyway, a few pictures and details as to what it's about. And I will come back again to what I think this is useful for and why I would or wouldn't get one of these. Um, it's always the question, if we ignore the cost and that, um, you know, I couldn't afford one at the moment. Um, if we ignore that aspect, it comes down to the, if somebody gave you one for, you know, a reasonably, a relatively small amount of money, would you keep that or would you get something else? Um, and it very much depends on what you want to do. I mentioned about the autofocus not being, it's contrast detect autofocus, so it's not terribly quick. It doesn't have face detection and things like that. So if you're going to take pictures of people, if you want one of the longer lenses and some very nice lenses, and you wanted to do some portrait work, I'm going to think that if you're used to using another camera with um, you know, better autofocus, this would irritate you. If you're doing landscapes, travel, it's just not that much of a trouble. I use this mainly in manual mode, but then that's, that's always how I tend to work with my photography. Um, what I've got, let's have a look at some pictures from it. So a quick check of the details on it. Same basic top for it. It has pop-up button here, uh, pop-up dial here, I should say. We accept manual or various modes, you can store modes. Really nice 
clear shutter release, uh, the gold button here. It's a nice feel to it. This is very distinct half press and full press. It's very clear to use. A few buttons. Most of what's done is done on the back screen of this if you're going to use it or through the viewfinder. Now, the screen on the back, uh, I found it perfectly okay in most lighting conditions. Now, it's winter at the moment, so I'm not out in really strong, bright sunshine where you might need to shade it. Now, I need glasses for uh, most of them for any close-up work. I was able to use this screen perfectly well for settings without having a look for me glasses for close-up stuff. Now, that's it's nice and clear. It's very easy to read. If you go for the new um, 100 megapixel version, um, it has a little screen on top, which also gives you the details on it. But yeah, rear screen works really well. like that one a lot. It's not tilt though or anything. So if you feel you need a screen that flips up and things like that, well, get another camera because this doesn't do it. Um, you know, it's a shot inside our conservatory. Um, and this, for an interior shot, there is bright sunlight coming through the window. Uh, it's partially lit, but I've got some quite strong shade. Um, it's in the afternoon, so the sun's fairly low. Um, the mix of lighting there, I've not needed to process that much. And it's the quality of the images that you get from this sensor that sets it apart. Now, you might say that the Fuji GFX 50S, or I don't remember which ones, has the same sensor in it. So if you're interested in this, you might actually find a more generalist camera like the Fuji GFX. Now, I've used the GFX 100 recently, really liked it. Um, the 50 probably works just as well. Certainly does. The sensor here is, is excellent it's noticeable the difference in quality of image that you get out of it compared to the 50 megapixel I get from my Canon. Now the Canon one is fine. Um, I've used it for my job for years. I don't have problems with it. If I had problems with it, I wouldn't be using it after all these years. This is just better. Um, but uh, yeah, it's an external shot. Uh, the lighting here, it lets you bring up shadow detail. You don't need to go to high ISO and if you do go to high ISO, ISO the noise is low. Um, it just captures images very well. Um, daytime shot. This is a new uh, bus station here in Leicester and I've just pulled up the shadows a little bit, opened it up a bit. Um, these pretty much out of the camera. Lighting I've got a little bit of, a tiny bit of flare there from the sun coming through on this. The lens is a good one. All Hasselblad lenses I've ever looked at have fallen into the, hmm, that's very nice category. Uh, mind you, they're, they're not cheap, but um, yeah, they're nice lenses. This is an example of how I can pull up in post-processing, how I can really change it. This I've shot and I've metered it and exposed it so that the sunlit end of this tunnel is not overexposed. Now, this next shot, it's possibly pushed a little bit too much, but it shows you the sort of recovery you can get detail out of the shadows. Um, if I tried that on my Canon at this level, I would be starting to get noise in those shadows. Um, even if I was to use a modern uh, some camera like the R5, I would get better performance in the shadows than I get with the 5DS, but still not as good as this, I'm going to say. Because also you're getting 16-bit from this. Now, the actual utility of 16-bit is debatable in some areas, but if that's what comes with better image quality out of it, well, I'll take the better image quality here. So just with that, if I go back, you can see just how much detail I've pulled out of that. Shot in the daylight there. Now, this is lit by just skylight here. Sun is low down. Um, I've got no problems in that, the detail in that shot whatsoever. Um, it's handheld. Everything I've shot on this is handheld. There's no uh, image stabilization in the body or in the lenses on this. So it involves on you having, you know, holding it steady and being careful of your choice of shutter speeds, uh, depending on what you want to do. 
I pulled that image up and the previous one quite a bit. Be careful that you don't overdo it. It's very easy to overdo it. Now this is on the verge. This is when I went out in some woods for what near sunset and I've pulled up the detail from this and it looks quite good. Now I might prefer actually to have a black and white version and this is on this other monitor here as a black and white shot conversion. Now I'm going to be having a look at that. I'll do a short video on making a print from this image here when I discuss a few more details about dealing with the images out of the sensor of this. But I'm happy. Colour, black and white, that's converted. Um, I tried the Hasselblad Focus software. It works fine. Um, the images process really well in this in DxO Photo Lab, and most of these ones here are are actually converted in the latest version of Adobe Camera Raw. It handles it as well. Lens corrections are important. Um, there is with this lens, there's a bit of barrel distortion. There's quite noticeable vignetting. Um, even at f/8, you're still going to get some with this uh, lens here. You tend to get that more on. on medium format lenses quite often because they've got to cover a larger area. It's easily fixable if you want to fix it. I found that the geometric distortion of this slight pink cushion, I only really needed to correct it if I was photographing buildings where there were straight lines I wanted to keep straight. Whereas the vignetting, I might dial it down a little bit, but I often left a little bit of vignetting in the picture just because it made for a better looking picture. But anyway, there you go. It's have a, if you want more details, have a read of the actual review for it. But back to the key question. Why would you buy one of these? Well, I'm going to assume you've got the money to do it. Um, and it's, as I said, like the sports car because you want a Hasselblad. Um, the quality, the build quality is excellent. The lenses are excellent. The image quality is excellent. But counter that with the fact there is no image stabilization. Um, with this, the video characteristic, this, this does shoot video, it'll do 2. Uh, yeah, HD or 2.7K. Um, it's not a video camera. It's really nice to use, really easy to use with a touch screen at the back, but you don't get a tilt screen and oh yeah, there are lots of things if you wanted to come up with reasons not to use this camera, you could come up with loads. But the interesting thing was taking it out, I enjoyed using it. Um, and there was the key to it. This is a camera for landscape photography, for travel photography. Um, whether I'd be happy taking something with Hasselblad written across it in some areas where I've traveled, I'm not entirely certain. But yeah, this is one for travel photography, landscape. This is one where you want good quality images and you're happy to pay for it. Now, for me, I might, as I've said, find more utility in a camera with a wider run range of functions. But for actually just taking pictures, this one is great. Um, let's see, it's, this is a, let's say, a used one from Park Cameras in the UK. Uh, so, f you know, hat tip to them for, for lending it to me. Um, they will have to dust it when they get it back and put it back in the box for somebody. Um, yeah, if you want this, this is a way into getting them. Not for everybody. Probably not for me either. Um, I want a little bit more. I want tilt shift. I want things like that. I want a bit more technical. But, you know, it is what it is and it's a Hasselblad. So I hope these um, sort of reviews or look, looking over cameras are of interest. Please do let me know in the comments if you've got any questions. This is here for a, you know, for a day or two more. Um, you know, if you've got any questions about this or other stuff you think I ought to have a look at. Um, I do normally look at new kit, um, certainly all the printers and things like that that I get through. through. But um, yeah, that was interesting. So uh, yeah, I got some nice pictures out of it as well. So thank you for watching and um, oh, please do subscribe to the channel. It is appreciated. Thank you.